So to begin this afternoon, please turn with me to Psalm 51, verse 17. Psalm 51, verse 17. In this scripture, we are jumping into the middle of King David's prayer of repentance. As we know, King David was was praying for God's forgiveness and mercy after committing a number of sins. Those sins, of course, including included committing adultery with Bathsheba and orchestrating the death of her husband Uriah. At a minimum, David was guilty of breaking the sixth, seventh, and tenth commandments as he was guilty of murder, adultery, and coveting. So in Psalm 51, 17, David is pouring his heart out to God, and he says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. So these, O God, you will not despise. So in Isaiah 57, 15, and I'll just read the scripture, The Bible has this to say about a contrite heart. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So we see that God gives consideration, support, and healing to those with a contrite heart. But what is a contrite heart, and why will God not despise this, as we read in Psalm 51, 17? So this afternoon, I want to explore those two topics, what a contrite heart is, and why would God not despise such a heart? So to begin, let's first take a look at the definition of contrite. Dictionary.com defines contrite as caused by or showing sincere remorse, filled with a sense of guilt and desire for atonement, penitent. An example would be, and this is actually what dictionary.com said, the example they gave was a contrite sinner. And synonyms for contrite would be repentant, remorseful, and rueful. Antonyms for contrite would be indifferent or unrepentant. The opposite of a contrite heart would be someone who is arrogant, stubborn, or puffed up. And an example of the opposite of a contrite heart could be, or would be, Pharaoh, right? So you remember the story of the Exodus, Pharaoh, his heart was described as hardened as he refused to let the Israelites go. So another characteristic that would be the opposite of a contrite heart would be a stony heart, right? In Ezekiel, we're told to remove our stony hearts. So we see that a contrite heart or contrite indicates that someone is truly sorry for what he or she did. In addition, they have a desire to atone for their sin, to get back on track, to make up for what they did. So a feeling of contrition isn't simply being sorry for being caught or a passing emotion, but a deep sense of guilt and a desire to change, repent, and be renewed and restored. The Hebrew word for heart is referred to as an inner, a person's inner being. And the word used for contrite in Psalm 51 means to be broken crushed, or very much crushed, broken, very small, broken in spirit, cast down. So we see that having a contrite heart is to be broken and remorseful in our very inner being. Various Bible translations phrase contrite heart as chastened heart, humbled heart, repented heart, or sorrowful heart. So we can see that having a contrite heart is recognizing our sin with a humble and teachable attitude and a strong 
desire to get back on track. So if we understand what a contrite heart is, why would God not despise a contrite heart, as David said? So I have three reasons this afternoon why God will not despise a contrite heart. And the first reason is a contrite heart is the foundation of repentance. So a contrite heart is the foundation of repentance. So if we recall the story of David and Bathsheba and the subsequent murder of her husband, David was not initially contrite. We know that God had to send Nathan the prophet to confront King David before David saw his sin. But once David saw the error of his ways and the depth of his mistakes, He was immediately contrite, and bitterly so, bitterly contrite. In Psalm 51, David prays, Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. So we see that David's contrition, or his contrite heart, led to an attitude of repentance. He recognized his sin. He had a deep desire to put his sin away and be cleansed of it. A contrite heart allows us to see our sins, to see their evil, vile nature, and to begin to turn away from it. A contrite, humble, teachable spirit grounds us and allows us to root out sin and make corrections where we need to do so. A contrite heart allows us to get back in alignment with God's way of life and truly live as the new man or new woman that we're called to be. So we see that a a contrite heart serves as the foundation or starting point for repentance. So the next reason why God will not despise a contrite heart is a contrite heart better allows us to choose God's way of life over our own desires. So a contrite heart better allows us to choose God's way of life over our own desires. So if we step back and consider the big picture of God's plan, we know that he is building a family. God's plan is to reconcile all men to him. And we know that God cannot and will not coexist with sin. So in order for us to be reconciled to him and exist forever in the kingdom of God, we must choose God's way of life over the evil of this world. In an evil world ruled by Satan, that's not always an easy thing to do. However, With a contrite, humble spirit, we can more easily put God's desires over our own. We can live the life God wants us to live. A contrite person is not stuck or hung up in their own desires. A contrite person is apt to seek the kingdom first rather than the pleasures of this world because a contrite person lacks a hard and stony heart. A contrite heart allows us to more easily choose God's way of life over the way we may naturally want to go. A contrite heart is not puffed up or arrogant. When we have a humble, teachable attitude, we more easily set aside our own desires and engage and embrace the life God wants for us. And the third reason that God will not despise a contrite heart is this. A contrite heart shows our true desire to live God's way of life. It shows our true desire to follow God's way of life. With a contrite heart, our Christianity is not an academic exercise. In other words, a contrite heart shows that we truly and deeply believe 
and desire to live this way of life. It shows that we are deeply committed to living as God wants us to. We're not simply showing up every week, coming to services, learning a little bit more and a little bit more, only to have academic knowledge, void of substance, void of action, and void of follow through. A contrite heart shows that we long to do right. We long to be in alignment with God's way of life. And it pains us deeply when we fall short. So as we continue down the path of conversion, let us consider the condition of our hearts. Do we have a humble, contrite, and teachable heart? Does our heart have stubborn, stony, and puffed up elements that need to be addressed? We know that God will not despise a contrite heart. So let us work to be humble, teachable Christians on our journey to the kingdom of God.